This month's Postfly warm water tie is the Gurgler, a simple yet effective top water pattern that will serve you well in the warmer months. They're lightweight, durable, and just plain fun to use when the fish are eating bigger meals on the surface. Begin by loading up a bobbin with a thread from your kit and tying it in behind the eye. Before you add any other materials, lay a thread base down from your tie-in point to about where the hook starts to bend, or just above the hook point. Now grab your olive craft fur and cut out a chunk that's about an inch thick at the base. Strip out any shorter fibers and then line up the fur where you stage your thread. You want this tail to be about three hook shanks in length, so scale accordingly. Make a few loose wraps before tightening down and tying in the butt ends towards the hook eye. This will anchor down the large clump of fur and prevent the tail from shedding out over time. Once the butt ends of the olive craft fur are covered, advance your thread back down to its original tie-in point. The second section of tail is made up of white craft fur and will be stacked directly above what you just did. Measure and cut a section in the same dimensions as the olive fur and tie it in, ensuring that it stays only on top without rolling to the sides of the hook shank. As you did before, cover the tags with thread. The tail of this fly benefits from a good amount of flash. Grab five or six strands from your kit and wrap them around your thread at their midpoints. As you make a wrap, slide the strands down your thread and onto the hook shank. Then finish your wrap, tying them in. While the wrap is still loose, you can kind of spread the back facing strands of flash out around the shank so that the entire tail appears to have flash running throughout. Repeat this process around the whole tail. When you're done, grab your scissors and shorten the flash so they don't extend past the end of the craft fur. You can also cut close any pieces of flash that are bent and won't stay back in this step. Next, take a single olive saddle hackle feather. To prepare this material, strip off the fuzzier filaments near the thicker base, leaving only the thin webby strands. Tie the hackle in by its tip, with the butt of the feather facing towards the fly's tail. Once secured, advance your thread up just a few turns, about an eighth of an inch from where you tied in the hackle. Wrap the hackle tightly towards your thread, separating and brushing the feathers back on every turn. Ensure all sides of hackle splaying out evenly, and that there are no matted sections. Once you've reached your thread, tie off and snip your excess. Pull the hackle rearward and build a small thread dam. This will further angle the hackle towards the tail, ensuring it pulses naturally in the water with every strip. Fishing top water for warm water species like bass usually ensures you'll be fishing your thick cover. We'll use a single strand of the thick monofilament in our kit as a weed card. Use a good pair of nippers to cut off a strand around 3 inches in length. When you go to line up the guard, use the natural curve of the mono to ensure that it will come back over the hook point when tied in. You can form line at any angle into a weed guard, but doing it this way definitely makes your life a bit easier. Tie in your weed guard about one eye length back from the front, and wrap it in almost to the hackle before snipping. Eventually we'll tie it down so that it covers the point of the hook, but I find it's easiest to leave it pointing outwards for now while we add the rest of our materials. Adding the mono in at this stage gives us more room to finish our fly later, and tying it further back makes the guard way more durable. This thick piece of foam is the signature material for a gurgler, making the fly float and moving the water when stripped. It's an awkward one to tie in, so I like to add a little drop of glue near the tie-in point to help it not wrap as much. With the olive side facing down and the foam aimed towards the tail, tie in about a quarter inch of the foam with a good amount of tight wraps. Don't worry about aesthetics here, since this will all get covered up later. When complete, move your thread to just in front of the foam's tie-in point. We'll be adding a dubbing body under the foam here via a dubbing loop. Lengthen your thread and hook it onto a finger on your non-bobbin hand. Bring this loop up and lay the strands making it on top of where you added your foam. Then take wraps over it to tie it in. We'll be using the olive dubbing from our kit, so pull a few healthy chunks out in advance. Add the chunks to the open loop loosely, stacking them one on top of the other. Hook your loop spinner, hackle pliers, or even just your finger, and spin the loop until the dubbing is tightened into more of a rope. At this point, you'll need a tool to pull out the dubbing strands again so it appears wispy when you tie it in. You can buy a dubbing brush, but a small strip of Velcro works well here too. Advance your thread to a couple of hook eye lengths back from the front of your fly, and begin wrapping your loop forwards. Brush the Velcroed out fibers back as you go, and ensure all the foam is covered. Don't worry if your body still looks matted down, we'll be hitting the tied and dubbing again with our Velcro. When you've reached your thread, tie off and cut the excess. You can wrap a little back onto the dubbing here to push some of those last fibers rearwards. Now grab your Velcro again and work around the whole shank, brushing the dubbing towards the tail. The finished product should have wisps of dubbing coming back as far as the hackle, making the body look nice and streamlined. Now take a small strand of pearl angel hair and twist it into a noodle on your thread. This won't make up too much of our fly here, just up to about where we tied in our weed guard. You should still have about half a hook eye of bare thread behind the eye. At this point, it's finally time to lock in our weed guard. 
Bring the front facing monofilament down and crease it so it folds back towards the hook. Take tight wraps over this crease to hold it in place, down to about where we stopped with our angel hair. Then pass your bobbin over the shank and make wraps behind the mono so that it isn't as tight to the shank. Your monofilament should now be aimed at about the hook point, covering the gap and extending past it. Cut the excess line a tiny bit below the point. When you lightly brush your finger towards the point, it should make contact with the mono first. The last step on our gurgler is to fold the rest of the foam down and tie it off. The trick here is to ensure that the front tag end that will rest above the hook eye is angled slightly up so that it catches a bit of water when you're fishing it. Most of the shaping actually occurs after the foam is tied in, so don't worry if it looks like it's aiming down at first. For reference, you want the foam that's facing back towards the tail from the head coming off of the shank at about a 45 degree angle. You could also build a small thread dam right behind the hook eye and under the head to push it up a little more. Once your head is in place, cut the corners off to give it three sides. You can whip finish either on top of your head securing foam wraps or under the head as I do here. I had the room for it, but I don't think it matters much where it takes place. Snip your thread once complete and add some head cement to hold everything in. And that's all for the gurgler. Fish it in and around cover or in open water and vary your retrieves to get an idea of how this fly moves with different speeds and pauses. Whatever you use it for, it's an all-time classic pattern and a staple in every bass angler's box. Happy gurgling and thanks for watching.